What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Dolphins in Depth Podcast. I'm Daniel Yafusi. That is David Neal. Thanks so much for tuning in. Quick reminder before we Coming start. Coming live from Cutler Bay. <laughs> well, recorded from Cutler Bay at Rod Benders. <laughs> there you go. Quick reminder before we start, make sure to subscribe to the Miami Herald YouTube page, like, share, comment, as well as subscribe to the Miami Herald. Now, I am back from uh, back in the United States for my trip uh, in Germany. Uh, Still a little bit jet lag, still a little tired. You can see the bags under my eyes if you're watching uh, on YouTube, uh, but grateful and thankful nonetheless. Uh, go ahead. I, 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 no, I thought I thought that was from enjoying the you know the the beer the beer every evening, the many German beers every evening. Oh, there was a lot of beer, probably more beer in one week that I've drank in my entire life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I think I came back with a little bit of a gut. But uh, again, nonetheless, <laughs> thankful and grateful for the opportunity to be out in Germany for the NFL's first regular season game uh, in, in Frankfurt, specifically the NFL having another game this weekend with uh, Patriots, Colts. But the Dolphins, uh, they were the first out in Frankfurt. There was a great showing from Dolphins fans uh, all from all over the world, uh, as well as, you know, the entire NFL uh, community coming out for that game. The Dolphins taking on the defending Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs, and they fell oh so short uh, in that matchup, 21 to 14, uh, a big pivotal loss uh, and really a missed opportunity in more, maze, more ways than one. The Dolphins are heading into their bye week uh, with the six and three record, though, uh, first place in the AFC East. And no matter what happens on their week off, they're going to be for, in first place when they come back to get ready to host the Las Vegas Raiders. So a little bit of silver lining there. But again, a bit of a missed opportunity for about no, about a half specifically with the offense. Um, just very lifeless. They go down 21-0 before fighting all the way back. Uh, they were 31 yards away from tying the game, but a pair of miscues, uh, very costly miscues on uh, the final two plays from scrimmage ultimately sealed their fate. To a turn of our lower misses, Cedric Wilson, or has a miscommunication with Cedric Wilson, and then um, a bot snap a shotgun exchange between him and Connor Williams uh, ultimately results in a turnover on downs. Um, so again, another missed opportunity in a quote-unquote measuring stick game. Um, and again, that, that, that deadly narrative uh, comes back about the Dolphins and their track record against winning teams. Now 0-3 against teams with the winning record. Uh, Mike McDaniel and several players spoke about um, kind of that narrative around the team and coming oh so short against those big, uh, in those big games. Mike McDaniel on Monday or on Sunday, he said, we know the narrative. And, you know, if we want the narrative change, the narrative to change, we have to do you know, we have to do the work to change the narrative. Uh, he had some interesting comments that I really want to kick things off with. Um, first half of the pod on Monday, speaking about some of the mistakes and some of the errors that we've seen uh, in these games against stiffer competition. And he kind of said, you know, it's kind of us beating us. Tyreek Hill alluded to that as well, talking about a lot of the pre-snap penalties and mistakes, shooting themselves in their in the foot, so to speak. Um, and, and he said it's more so about what they're doing. Um, and not as, and while giving credit to the teams that they've lost, he was saying it's not as much as what they've done, uh, but what the Dolphins are doing to themselves. And I got to say, I agree with him kind of to an extent, maybe half of that. Um, Cause I think that without a doubt, you can see this team has, is getting closer and closer to, to kind of getting over that hump against the, the top teams, you know, 48 to 20 in week four against the bills, um, 31 to 17 against the Eagles, but they were driving early in the fourth quarter with an opportunity to tie the game. And now you see with one minute left, they have an opportunity to, on really two plays, to get into the end zone. I mean, whatever the miscommunication was with Tua and Cedric Wilson, he had him with a step uh, on the receipt on the cornerback. And then obviously on the final play, uh, if you look at the replay, Jalen Waddle was uh, open downfield for a potential touchdown. Um, so for no, no, you 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 fumble, you fumble a you fumble a snap, whatever anybody else does. So, sorry, that doesn't that doesn't that. But they had the. I mean, they had the. They had the play. I don't care who's I don't care what it looks like. I don't care who's who's open. You fu you fumble the snap, that changes everybody else's reaction to the play. It it just does. So, so I mean, you know, I know I, I know what say, you're saying. Let's but... say the Cedric Wilson, the Cedric Wilson play. Yeah, they had they had an opportunity there. Um, you know that was a, that looked like a miss. You know, a clear miscommunication. Uh, or you know, one person. You know, what, Cedric Wilson saw one thing and decided, or maybe they saw the same thing and decided Cedric Wilson's going to adjust to it this way. Who is expecting something else, and you know that that's a big missed opportunity. 
it's a missed opportunity at the end of the half. Um, and but it's also a missed opportunity that entire it felt like that entire second quarter uh was a missed opportunity to me to me uh at least until the chiefs went up like 14 oh oh because it's it just seemed like there was this the the field position thing was ha happening for them and i'm going okay at some point, some point you're going to take advantage over. and you're going to get it going the defense was, yeah and, and, and the defense and, played and, its best game of the year kind of given the circumstances and it was kind right. of a wasted effort Right. They, I mean, they played, they played their best half, but let's, cause I mean, they, uh, I mean, you, I mean, they, they, you, you, they, hold, they, you hold the Chiefs, 14, you hold right. the Chiefs to 14 it's points 14 and you hold the Chiefs to a season low 267 yards. And you hold Travis Kelsey to a season low yardage. Right. They, the they, they that's, that's, that's tremendous. That's tremendous effort by the defense. And you can't blame them for kind of what, you know, what happened. I mean, the, when it, the, the difference in the game ultimately on the scoreboard is a fumble return for a touchdown and yeah. uh, and a, a long fumble return for a touchdown because the Dolphins are driving. Uh, so, but that is, and, and let's say that, you know, that's also a, that's a Dolphins turnover, but that was also a pretty darn good play by the Chiefs de defense. Yeah, they played great. Even to, get, even, to get the, even to get the ball out and then the presence of mind, you pick it up, you're stopped, and then uh, you know the presence minded to pitch, and you know it, it just it was a good it was a you know was obviously was not a, an offensive play that you that you'd want, and then but the Chiefs smelled it out because the play wasn't going anywhere as it was. Yeah, and even if he gets even if he gets dropped there, it's a how many yard loss, it, it you know or and um so you know the Chiefs defense did their job also. So again. Yeah, they're closer. Um, yeah. Although, if you ask, if you want to play, say, yeah, which would you bet on happening more? The Chiefs getting better offensively or the Dolphins getting better defensively? You know, so I mean, saying, I would, I would, I think, put, I think I those would put the stock, I would put stock in honestly the, 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 the defense. Or, or, both, both, okay. Let's say both will improve. I mean, if I had to pick one, both, I, I would say I would say the defense. But I think there's reason to believe that both will improve. But both, both will, reason. both will improve. I think, that, I think there's a, I think there's more room for improvement from the Chiefs' offense than from the Dolphins' defense. I, no, I just that, think that's there's fair. There's more room for improvement there, and you know, it, it's, you know, it. Yeah, they're they're beating themselves in these situations, but then again, you know, you get a you get a false start against New England or against Denver. You know, when Denver's you know clocking out and still haven't haven't figured out what the heck Sean Payton wants or you know doesn't seem interested, that's one thing. Okay, it, it, you know who cares? You, you you can get that. You're gonna make that back. You have a false start against Philadelphia or against KC. The way their defense is playing. Well, now you're behind the sticks, and you might as well bend over because they're going to beat you with that stick that you're behind now. Because they, they it, they're not giving, they're not letting you back in. Yeah, they're more, not, they're more, they're more costly against the better teams. Yeah, that's what the, the consequences are greater with the mistakes against the better teams. That's the way it's always been. And yeah, you don't. Um, so I, I partially agree with the Dolphins' narrative that yeah, you, you're making mistakes. It's your mistakes that are hurting you. Uh, you know your penalties, your turnovers, your miscommunications. But it's also a factor of hey, you you know you, you can do the same thing against the Giants, and there's not a lot of consequences. We saw we saw this. Okay, they're going they're going in against the Giants to kind of almost put the game away in one half, and the Giants run it back. There's a big momentum swing. And if the Giants are were a better team, there probably would have been a bigger momentum swing. But no, it wasn't. The Dolphins came down, kicked a field goal, go in at the half, come out in the second half, and thank you very much. That's that. And so that's and that's what happens against you know your punk teams as opposed to you know your teams that are looking to make a six straight AFC championship game in a you know their fourth Super Bowl in the last six years or seven years, something like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I agree with you. And I think, you know, going back to Mike McDaniel's original statements, there, I think there was something to be said for what the teams 
that they've lost to are doing. I mean, we, we've seen a kind of consistent track record in, in types of matchups that are giving them troubles and the way these games are playing out. So you're seeing on really, you know, when I'm talking about the the Dolphins, the struggles of the Dolphins offense, I mean, that's that's where we're really seeing uh, kind of the, the difference and disparity. You know, like when they're on at home at Hard Rock Stadium, they have kind of the, the crowd behind them and whatnot. Um, they're averaging like 43 points. But when they go on the road and they have to deal with the crowd noise uh, and whatnot, they're averaging about 23 points per game. And we're seeing um, the types of defenses and types of units that are giving them trouble. You know, if you can be physical – uh, with the with those wide receivers, if you can get some pressure, if you can not necessarily pressure to it, but get disrupt the timing of the offense, because we know that they do so much motion and everything is built off timing. Is Tua is not a very improvisational quarterback, and I don't really knock Tua for that nowadays because that's just that's just who he is. I know a lot of times when they've lost, people have brought that up, and I'm like, that's just who Tua is. I mean, you have to play to the strengths of you know your players, and that's what they're doing. But we're seeing, you know, this consistent, you know, we're, right, right at this point, there's a track record. I know a lot yeah. of Dolphins fans don't like when, uh, when, when, when I'm not using the fraud word. I'm not using the F word. I'm not, I'm not calling no. them frauds. But, you know, there is, you know, there's narrative, there's perception, and there's reality. And the reality is they're 0-3 against the best teams in the NFL. And the way that they've lost or the way that they've struggled on offense has been consistent. It's been pre-snap penalties, turnovers slow starts and not the crispness crispness that we've seen and my thing is and i said it before public perception doesn't matter but you have to under have to understand why people are perceiving you a certain way and the dolphins haven't played um and it just so happens that all three of those games that they've lost are on the road i know it just is what it is maybe you'd like to see the dolphins get one of those games at home or maybe you should they're gonna have to play well enough to get one of those games at home at this point but i will say you know, there's perception, there's and then there's reality. And the reality is that they have not played well against those teams and they haven't done anything that would inspire belief that I don't and I know there's still eight more games to go, second half of the regular season, but the Dolphins at this point haven't done anything to inspire hope that they can go on the road and win multiple games to get to the Super Bowl. I mean, that's just the fact of the matter. And 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 again, I go back to you know, they can say, you know, they're aware of the narrative, as you said, they're aware of the narrative. And they're part of the reason they're aware of the narrative is, you know, sports can be a little bottom line. And, you know, they can say one thing to us, but I guarantee you, they know it. They're sitting there going, well, you, you know, you, you don't see it. You don't see them coming at, you know, get an attitude about it because there it is right there. You you didn't, you didn't get it done in Buffalo. You didn't get it done in Phil, Phil, Philadelphia. You didn't get it done against Kansas city. And I'm sorry, that's a neutral side game. You know, a lot of Dolphin uh... fans, you know, it, it, hey, it I was there. Was it, it Arrowhead? Was it hold Arrowhead? Up, hold up, hold up. Hold was up, it Arrowhead? Hold up, hold up. It was not an Arrowhead, but I was there, and it sounded like it was very skewed to the Chiefs. I know that there were a lot of Dolphins fans in there, and there were times where the Chiefs were on the field, the Chiefs offense was on the field, and you heard some let's go defense chants uh, from the Dolphins out there, but that was a crowd that mainly favored the Chiefs. I will say that. Oh, it was okay, a neutral side game, but the crowd favored. The crowd gave the Dolphins' offense way more trouble than it gave the Chiefs' offense, and there, there's a reason behind okay. that. I'll say that. Which, which really doesn't give me now a lot of optimism for, you know, if they got to go to Kansas City in January. Yeah. Really? You know, it, you, you're going to say, oh, the, you know, the, the Frankfurt crowd gave you a big problem? <laughs> really? You gonna come back here with that? Yeah, they were they were they were burning timeouts early, and I was like, okay, that's not a good sign. Crowd gave us a, the Frankfurt crowd gave us a real problem, but we're gonna go to we're gonna go to Buffalo or Kansas City or Cincinnati in January and take that and take that butt. Yeah, and and that's where the missed opportunity lies because it's like you win that game, you're tied for the best record with the Ravens, I believe, uh, right. and you actually you actually are the number one seed, and more importantly, you have that head to head tiebreaker over the Chiefs. Now you're one game behind. You don't have the tiebreaker. And now and not only do you have to win your games, but you have to hope that other teams lose so that you can get back in there. Again, the Dolphins, they're still in a very good spot in the division. Right. They're still on a good track to make the playoffs, but I'm thinking long term. I'm thinking right. one, you missed an opportunity. And two, you only further you only further the the narrative that you 
are maybe not what you presented yourself in the first month of the season or the first couple games of the season because whenever you play a good team, you don't look like yourself. It'd be different if the Dolphins want, if the Dolphins, you know, were just going toe-to-toe and the Dolphins offense was scoring 35 points and they lost the shootout 33. All right, I I can live with that. I mean, again, it'd still be a missed opportunity, but you can kind of live with that if the offense looks the way that it's looked at home, you know, in this neutral site game or in a games against Buffalo and Philly on the road. But it's the fact that it's just such a discrepancy. Like it's, it's like night and day, the performances. That's what gives me cause for pause. And I know a lot of fans don't like uh, people pointing out that they're 0-3 against winning teams, but that's that's fact. It's not like anybody's making up or fudging any stats. Like, that is that is a fact. And I don't know. And I think that, again, I think that there, should, there needs to be some type of accountability for that. I mean, I don't understand why. Like, I don't care – about, you know, the Bills or this team or that team, you know, when we look at the Dolphins, like there should be some accountability. There should be a higher standard. People should be asking more questions like why aren't we, you know, sustaining the level of play? And, of course, you're not going to play, you know, a perfect game, especially against the better teams in the NFL. But, you know, halfway through the season, you don't have anything to show for against the best teams in the NFL. And I think that that should be concerning. I think that for people to kind of, you know, you know, just kind of poo-poo it and say, oh, well, we didn't get these games at home or we weren't at full strength or, uh, you know, this or that. Like, you're never going to have a perfect situation. Sometimes, you, and I said this last week, sometimes you just got to win these games or two weeks ago. Sometimes you have to find a way to win these games. And today, yeah. the Dolphins haven't done that yet. And they, and they don't, and they, and you know that that's the difference. That I mean, that's people, teams that find a way to win the games, or that say, okay, you know, that that somehow get it together and manage to not make the math, not make the big mistakes, or you know, make those mistakes and still manage to somehow you know overcome them one way or the other. Um, you know, you know, it's just a mindset. Okay. We, we got to get 15 yards on third down. We got to do it. We're going to do it. And But I think also it still comes back to if you do it, once you start do once you start doing it more and more, then you get, you know, you're like, okay, we, we can, we know we can do this. We definitely can do this. And that's why the, the offense is comfortable. You know, uh, you know, that was that early deficit against Carolina. They were like, okay, well, 14, no, we can, we can do this. And, you know, yeah, it was, for, it was Carolina. But they also knew, hey, we, we can put up some points here. So, you know, we just need we need to get started going and the defense is going to figure it out and then it's all going to be OK. If but there's not that confidence against some of your better teams. And, you know, look, all points to the offense for resi- the resiliency and coming out there in the second half and keeping and, you know, making the game, keeping it a game. Um, but. There's some of this, you know, some of the same things kind of kept popping up, including on that last drive. Uh, at the start of the drive, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, they went Bill Walsh the catch drive on us, and and they're and instead of throwing the ball when they need to move it big chunks, they're moving the big chunks on the ground. This is great. Whoa, go on, go on, Mike. And then they got, then it was, you know, it was then it was time to throw the ball all over the place. And yeah, three straight incompletions, and then you have the you, you know get the, the bad snap. snaps, and, yeah, and, and and I know that you know McDaniel was asked about that by our own Barry Jackson, and I, and in defense of McDaniel, I mean, hey, a lot of times we are very results oriented, and we just look at it through that lens, where just because he threw the ball and it didn't work out doesn't mean it was a bad play call, but it is you know you can't question maybe you should have you know kept somebody I, in, in the that in the is something I think and, that. That Man, but. people saw going into those last few plays like oh wait a minute they just ripped off two big chunk plays and they're cross they're crossing them up because casey has no choice they can't casey can't sit there and they've got to play they've got to play off they can't play the run at that yeah. point i mean i mean there's, yeah. a, there's, a, there's about a minute left i mean i don't want to get too in the weeds but there's about a minute left you got the 31 yard line you did rip off those two runs but at some point you know you got to Start making like you, pushing you the do ball have, down the field and getting into the end zone. So I don't want to make too much of that right there. There I, were I, plays I just, to be I made think, at the end on the last couple of plays, though. But I think there's also what did we see also last year the tendency sometimes when they get in those, you know, when it gets tight and it gets gets late, sometimes there's a tendency for the Dolphins to forget. Yeah, you can still you, you can still do that. You can still run the ball, you know. And it yes, it takes. 
there's a lot of court coordination involved, especially because if you don't get out of bounds, that clock's running and you got to get up Then you got, you know, then you may have to spike a ball and lose, lose a down. Um, there's a lot going on there. And so, but I did think, see that as I felt like I was reminded a little bit of last year in some, in, uh, in that situation, but, you know, ultimately, you know, we, this is, this is all, you know, all stuff around the core, the core, which is okay. You've got to, you know, just like Dallas over in the NFC. Hey, at some point in this regular season, you gotta, you gotta beat somebody who, you know, is on, is on your level, you know, or maybe above, above your level at that point, or, you know, how's anybody going to think you're going to do it in January? Yeah, you got to do it. You got to show it. Especially when you're going to have to probably do it on the road. So, not for sure. Yeah, it's definitely a missed opportunity, as I said. Um, I guess the one, the one real shining, one really like positive part of that performance was I would say the defense definitely you know it was the first time yeah. um, we had the entire starting defense projected starting defense and and you know no team is fully healthy but this was the projected starting defense on the field that we expected you know when training camp opened you know we had Jalen Ramsey and Xavier Howard out there Javon Holland was back from uh from injury um and you know, outside of, you know, really two drives, you know, the the opening drive that looked, you kind of were like, oh, wow, okay, well, this is not the unit we expected, but they were really locked in after that, only gave up one, uh, one touchdown drive after that, they kept the Chiefs scoreless in the second half, again, as I said before, uh, 267 total yards was a season low, um, Travis Kelsey was held to a season low catches, reception, uh, catches, receiving yards, if you told me that the Dolphins did all of that on defense before the game, I'm probably telling you that, you know, the Dolphins are winning that game and they might win it by, you know, multiple scores. Um, but again, you know, going forward, I think that that is something to be very, very, you know, optimistic about. I said multiple times, you know, I've been saying it for the longest time, but I thought this defense had a lot of potential entering the season. And I think that, you know, at full strength, you know, they they really held up their end of the bargain. And I think that, you know, in the second half of the season, uh, that's something that they can really lean on. You know, the offense, I think that they're going to bounce back well. Um, but, hey, if you do have some tough games, you know, they still have games against the Cowboys, uh, the Ravens, the Bills to end a regular season. Um, you can potentially really count on or count on that defense to hold things down if the offense maybe isn't, uh, you know, at, uh, you know, the, the level of the peak that we've uh, seen over the first half of the season for sure. Yeah, and I, and uh, it's easy to rely on defense it, once your defense gets going. That's something that can be a little more reliable than offense. Even the you know even the best offenses because you know just things happen. Yeah, you know, rain, snow, wind. Just or you just you just have one of those days where you just you're that tick off. You know you're throwing the ball a tad early. You're throwing the ball a tad behind. You're you know. You you pick you're picking the wrong hole and, and offenses have those days. Um, there are very few offenses that have not had those days, um, and so and right now as you look at the Dolphins in these game in these major games, they they need a you know this is they can't they're not going to outshoot somebody. It, it doesn't look like it, and nor should we kind of maybe expect it because that's just not the way these things usually happen. You know, it's going to take a total team effort, and which is usually does if you're going to, you know, go deep into the playoffs and you know be a Super Bowl contender. You tend to have to be usually a complete team, and the and the one way teams, the the lopsided teams that do tend to go far go far it tends to be the defense tends to be the lops the lopsided part. Um, you know, some exceptions, Kansas City to some extent back in 2019 um but you know that they're going to need the defense and the defense did play well especially in the second half and you know kept that kept that game close when it could have they could have gotten out of hand yeah and, i mean they caught they forced to keep uh turnover that you know uh, right the and, second and that's another, too. they you know the defense you know in the loss against philadelphia scored one and set up another uh KC, they get the Dolphins needed a turnover to get to get back in that game. There, there was 
you know, as you look, watch how that game was going, you're like, okay, if they don't get a turnover, if they need it or a long special teams return, it's it's not going to happen for them. They're they're not going to be in this game. And then they got they got that turnover, and so yeah, the de- I mean, good performance by the defense, uh, especially in the second half, and um, then again, you also and you know, but again, flip side, you, you know. I, I kind of thought Tyreek Hill would do a little more damage to Kansas City than he did. But, yeah, I mean, it, it was a, it was definitely an off day from him. I mean, he had they, a, he had a and, bad drop. But they also seem to have they they seem to have their you know their business together also. Um, so, uh, you know, six and three at the at the bye, and uh, you're leading a division that you know right now doesn't look you know the the Patriots are out of it the. Jets and Bills can't seem to figure out which way they're, you know, as the joke goes, they're, uh, you know, it's a north-south game and they're playing for the west. Um, they can't seem to figure out which way they're going. So, you know, the Dolphins are in a good position. Yeah. And I mean, they, they, they just need to – there's a hump they need to get over. There's another hump, another level. And every team has to do it at some point. And now I think in this last part of the season, it's when they need to do it. And if they can't do it, you know, then you got to look in the offseason of, okay, what are we not doing? What have, what have we learned from those games? Yeah, I mean, like I said, uh, you know, the top six and three, as you mentioned, top of the division. Um, you know, McDaniel said, it, you know, uh, it's kind of a Jekyll and Hyde feeling, you know, because the offense struggled so much with the defense, uh, you know, was, you know, was – you know, so good in their effort as well. And it's kind of a wasted effort from there. Uh, so a lot to, you know, at six and three, you know, a lot to be happy about, but a lot to, uh, you know, but not satisfied and a lot to correct. Uh, you know, players had a walkthrough uh, on Tuesday. I believe they're going to have the rest of the week off and they'll come back on Monday to prepare for the Raiders. Um, we're going to take a short break. But when we come back on the other side of things, we are going to grade the Dolphins' first half of the season as well as oh, give gosh, our outlook. Really? Yeah, first gotta, half grades, first half grades, superlatives, all of that good stuff, uh, as well as give our outlook for the second half of the season. So stay locked with us. Uh, we'll be back soon. Man, what's going on, everybody? Still here on the Dolphins of the Dead podcast with David Neal talking all things Dolphins. Now, in the first half, we went over the Dolphins' uh, week nine loss to the Kansas City Chiefs ahead of their bye week. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, at the end of the first half, Dolphins players had a light, very light uh, walkthrough. Uh, guys were out in shade, eating gummy bears, uh, just kind of going through some uh, some last minute things before their, uh, you know, kind of excused from the facility uh, until next Monday. A week. Um, Say yeah. bye. <laughs> nice, nice little bye week. Uh, there. <laughs> guys were in a good mood, you know, obviously, you know, not the yeah. result that they wanted this past uh weekend. Um, but as again, as you said multiple times, um, six and three uh through nine games, first place in the AFC East. No matter what happens this weekend, they will remain in first place. Uh currently the number four seed in uh the AFC. So that would, you know, if the season did end today, uh, the Dolphins would be playing a first round uh, game at Hard Rock Stadium where they are undefeated and have been very, very good over the past couple couple years um i was just looking at starting the break i was looking at uh my preseason predictions for the team i had them at 11 and 6 uh for the entire season and i had them at 6 and 3 at the halfway point so they're kind of right within my initial projections i was off on Master daniel thomas <laughs> not exactly i was off on a couple games i think week one i was off you know who's perfect i was definitely wrong in week nine and I was wrong in another, another game. But, you know, can't well, we, we, and we were both wrong last week. Yeah, we were. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, what we, happens. Can't bad a thousand. <laughs> um, but again, I mean, at six and three, I mean, I think it's interesting because I think that some things have fallen in line with my expectations and other things haven't. I think um, I expected improvement from the offense, but I don't think that I expect them to be like number one in pretty much all major statistical categories. I think that they're they they just got leapfrogged by the Ravens for uh, first in rushing. The Dolphins are two, and they have the highest yards per carry average. Um, I thought I mean nobody could have foreseen the Jalen Ramsey injury, uh, you know, on the second day of training camp. Um, but even with him out, I think that uh, the defense definitely underachieved and struggled uh, the first couple of games of the season. I think they started to turn it around. And then with Jalen Ramsey and the entire healthy defense together, um, 
you start to you start to really see that potential, and I think that they'll improve as they get more comfortable and as the season progresses. Um, so I think they're in a good spot. I think that the one thing that kind of skews my grade, which I'm about to get to in a minute, uh, is the fact that they have struggled so much against the top tier teams. Um, you know, before the season, I thought that, you know, I said that they were the most talented team in the AFC. Um, and I think that, you know, they can go toe to toe with any team um, in in the league, really, specific, specifically in the AFC. Um, I think that we, we've kind of seen that, especially the last two games against the Eagles and against uh, the Chiefs, where they do fall behind, but they're able to bounce back and kind of show their resiliency. And, and they are. I mean, the margins are getting very, very close. But as we said, they haven't gone over that hump and now they are 0 and 3 against teams with winning records with all that being said we do have to kind of factor in you know the injuries on both sides of the ball um especially on offense where you know it was like every week it just felt like somebody was in another lineup whether it was the offensive line or HN or whoever it may be um but they are getting very very close to full health I mean I think that for the Raiders game, you this really could be the healthiest they've been in its entirety. The defense is already back. It looks like they're probably going to get HN back for the Raiders game. Um, looks like they're going to get Robert Hunt, who didn't play um, in, in Germany because of a hamstring injury. They could get River Craycraft, who they've kind of lost. They've kind of been missing his presence as a number three wide receiver and as a blocking wide receiver. They could be at full strength, you know, out of the bye. And that's when I really expect them to kind of turn it up uh, and, and and really show the team that, you know, I thought that they could be entering the season. Right now, I'd probably give them like a B, B plus, which I know might sound a little harsh because they are six and three uh, and number one in the division. But it's kind of the manner uh, by which they've gotten a six and three that's left me still a little bit cautious about where this team is. But um, I think that they're still in a good spot to win the division, which um, I, I didn't predict before the season. I, I didn't think the Bills were going to fall off like this or not fall off, yeah. but have the struggles that they've had. I think and, that the and, Dolphins and, right now are a better on team. Aaron Rodgers being injured either. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that, yeah, I was going to say the nature of the, those two those two wow. developments kind of just kind of changed the catalyst or the calculus in the division. But I do think the Dolphins are the best team in the division. I do think they're going to win the division. Um, but – uh, again, I've said it. I think I said after the Bills game, the standard has changed. You know, you can beat up on the Raiders, which I expect them to do. You can beat up on the Titans and the Commanders, which I expect them to do. But, you know, I do have those certain games circled, even against the Jets, who have a really good defense. Uh, and I think they're going to test the Dolphins offense. You know, I'm looking to see what they do in Black Friday. And what I'm not saying I'm not saying they're going to lose the game. I expect them to win the game. No, no, but no, I, no, the no. Man, how they go about and how they go about those games is what I'm looking for. Obviously, the Bills, uh, the Ravens and the uh, Cowboys later to kind of round up the season. Um, but I think they're in a good spot right now, for sure. Yeah, I, I definitely think they are. And, you know, the Jets do have a very good defense. However, you know, they've, they've got SpongeBob, a quarterback. So, you know, I have no idea what, you know, that that's just that, the, the Dolphins should eventually. That's one of those games that, OK, it, eventually they're going to score enough points and the Jets can't. Yeah. And um, so, uh, you know, I, I expect those two games they're you know, to win. So those those other three games, the ones we've all talked about, the ones we've, the ones we've now pointed to, I think. Those are just, those are just incredibly important games to. And they, and they, I think they're going to win the division. You know, I I, just, I don't see them because the, the, the Bills have a kind of murderous row schedule over the next couple of weeks. So if I can, I try to bring it up real quick. Exactly been, you know, they haven't exactly been, you know, looking like a Super Bowl contender against anybody else. I mean, so yeah, I mean, they're dealing with they're dealing with injuries, especially on defense, that I think is going to be really make it really hard for them to to be competitive against the better teams in the AFC. I think that when they play in Week 18, that's going to be. I mean, for all we know, the Dolphins could have the division, you know, uh, sealed up by then. But if not, I think it's going to be very tough for them to replicate what they did. The Bills' defense, I'm saying, uh, it's going to be hard for them to replicate what they did in Week Four against you know the Dolphins' offense as, yeah. as it stands. But I, I, you know, I think the Dolphins going to win, win the division. I think. And I, my personal overall grade for them would be B plus. Um, I, I, uh, I think I don't think they're an A team. I think because a, a, a is a great team, and I don't know if there's any great teams in the, the, the A. The A teams, the ones you can say seriously are, we know they're Super Bowl contenders. Are the they, Dolphins they, a Super they, Bowl they, contender? That's the question. They, they can say, they can say they are Super Bowl contenders without any ifs, ands, or buts. Uh, I think Baltimore can say can say that. 
Are the Dolphins a Super Bowl contender though? Because I think that's that's what? the question though. Are the Dolphins though a Super Bowl contender right now? Why? 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 Why do we think? Why do we think we think they're they can be? They can be. Just because you have a B plus at the midterm doesn't mean you can't be a A at the end. You know, we all know that. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about right now. I'm talking right now, like the way you view them right now. Right now? I Super Bowl no, what? No, why? No, I they, would agree. I would agree. I'm just, no, why? just, because, just, just I mean, checking. Look, you know, look at Detroit's been having a good year. Okay. And maybe Detroit had an off day, but look at what Baltimore laid on Detroit. Okay. Um, look at. You know, look at KC just surviving every every week. Their offense is, you know, it's so so. But 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 with KC, I'll say that their defense, their defense is very good. And again, their, their I, defense, before, I think they get the benefit of the doubt because we've seen. Of course, of course, they get the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> if anybody gets in this league, gets the benefit of the doubt, it's them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is San Francisco? You kind of want to start to see. A little something you start to see a little something you wonder if this is just a slump or is this a serious road change here yeah. road grade change from you know if their long and winding road is going to be a little more winding than you thought to the super bowl uh i don't see dallas uh, you can't say dallas that philadelphia oh yeah you know um so i i think those i think the four teams baltimore kansas city uh San, uh, San Francisco, Philadelphia, Cincinnati starting to get it together, and they've they've looked really good late lately. So, looking at their trending, eh, I might edge them in the, into that small group before I'd put the Dolphins into that small group. Um, you know, the Dolphins aren't there yet, and that's okay. There's there's no, you know, they don't. They don't award any of the little silver paperweights. They don't give those out at the half season. That's that's fine. It's a B plus. So, um, you know, they just, I think they need more, you know, more mistake free play. What well, we've talked about the first, but it was, it was the same thing. But, but, but I would say my concern is, my concern is, um, and, I, and I asked this to Mike McDaniel, like, like what more can you do? I mean, the the issues presented themselves in week four, so a month ago. Um, like the 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 offensive issues on the road presented themselves a month ago. Pre snap penalties, um, just overall penalties, sloppy play, troubles with crowd noise that presented itself a month ago. Um, they played at Philly three weeks later, same deal, same issues. They played a neutral site game that favored Kansas City and, you know, was more or less against them. They had the same issues. So at what point it's just like, like, like I'm very curious what they can do to fix those issues. And if this is just something that is just going to be the case, I mean, everyone struggles with crowd noise, but it seems like the impacts of it and the Dolphins offense are just way more pronounced on the road compared to when they're at home. And I do wonder because we've seen this three times. And then again, they they played games, they played other games on the road too that they won. I mean they won on the road at Los Angeles, even though that's not a, a big home field advantage. They won in Foxborough, where I think that they had some of these issues, but they weren't able, but they didn't necessarily fight them. But my thing is like we've seen this three times against top tier talent where these mistakes have been present and they've come back to bite them. And I do wonder like how much can they fix that or is this just what's it's just going to be because because until i see it until i see you fix it i can't believe it's just going to naturally no, snap my it, fingers it and it's going to be fixed it, it doesn't just go it doesn't just go away and you know like they're going to play they're going to play in, in in new york they're going to play in baltimore right. you know they're, they're, they're going to play in some places where they in the play in the regular in the second half of the season where you know they're going to have to fix that and again the way it's going unless they you know unless the the chiefs and the ravens kind of lose a couple games in the second half of the season and the dolphins go on like a seven and one run uh they're gonna have to play at least one game on the road in the playoffs and again until i see the operation get cleaned up. I have no reason to believe that it will be, and that's my thing. That's that's the thing. That's that's my that's my one issue with the offense. You have to show me at some point. You know, Bradley Chubb said it himself. Like we're close, we're close, we're close. But close isn't enough. Like they right. 
they have to they have to flip that switch and get over that hump, and they haven't done it yet. So if you don't show me in the regular season, I have no reason to believe in that it's going to be done in in the playoffs when it matters. And, and McDaniel was saying that they're thinking long term. They're thinking uh, of trying to improve uh, to the point where you know they don't make these mistakes when the season's on the line. But I haven't seen that improvement like tangibly. Obviously, the margins and the results are getting a little bit closer. You know, you're not losing by 28. You're not losing by 14. But it's the same script and the same issues. That, that that's my one problem. That's my one issue. And it is t- it is tough to clean. I think I think it's tough to clean that stuff up in season. You know, it's well, well, they they. It, it's funny because I think the first. It's funny again. It it really didn't sh- show and really present itself until week four. You know, I think that they they have cleaned up the pre snap penalties to an extent, but when they're on the road, that's when it really becomes an issue. And and, and, yeah. and also, I mean, if you're going to run a lot of motion before the snap, you do kind of create a situation where you know there there's more things that can go wrong. You know, there, there you know if there's something can go wrong in every single play. Yeah, it takes 11 guys to not jump the snap or not, you know, get snapped. But when you're doing all, you know, when you're running all forms of motion, it just, it's just one more thing that, you know, when it works and when it works fine, it's really good for you, but it is one more thing that can go slightly wrong. And um, I don't know, again, I don't know how you clean that up in a road for a road situation during the season. I mean, I, I don't know how you, I know, you know, teams love to you know, practice pumping in crowd noise or, you know, doing different things. They're doing silent and, counts and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. And, and, you know, I'm sure there are ways to do, to, you know, to do it. And uh, if you're Mike McDaniel and the coaching staff, that's what you get paid to figure out. And so, this is also a situation where we're going to see, we sh- you know, maybe we see the growth of Mike McDaniel either this year or, you know, in the off season or, because I think we've seen growth from year one to year two, you know, I think that, that it also can't, that can't be overestimated. His, this, he's not a coach. He's not a guy with a long coaching head coaching resume, you know, um, that doesn't mean he can't be a very good head coach or great head coach, but there's a learning curve and there's a learning curve into how to deal with things. You know, nobody gets it all right on the first, you know, the first time or the second time or the third time. Bill Belichick didn't, Don Shula didn't, um, you know, Vince Lombardi kind of, you know, kind of did in a very different era, but um it's you know i i think this is where we see mcdaniel's growth and the coaching staff's growth and you know this is where coaching may have to make a difference and um, yeah i mean but it's that problem is is the microcosm of their macro problem of okay we We've seen this happen on the road a number of times. You know, how do we have faith that you don't, you aren't going to be able to do it? Well, we've, you know, we've seen you lose these teams a number of times. How do we have faith that you're going to do it again? again but this is, it's that in, in micro, but it's also a part of why, you know, the bigger problem exists. Uh, can their offense be, can their offense be better? Yeah. It could be better in the in those in those games, and I think there can always be a little more consistency. And I think they've this year they have obviously they've devoted just a little bit more to the run run game, and by doing that opens everything up and makes them more dangerous in the passing game. You know, because one way teams are, you know, one way offense teams they get sooner or later that 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 doesn't go. They, they get exposed and they get, you know, sooner or later you have to do what you don't do well. Or, and if you, and if you do both of them, well, well, that puts you in pretty good stead. Uh, even in the crappy weather, um, 
even through the crappy weather against a good run defense, you can you can still complete some passes. Yeah. You know, we've all seen, you know, you've watched enough football, you'll see shootouts in the snow, shootouts in the rain. Uh, but that works really well if you, but their two-pronged attack right now is a better attack than last year. It's, a, it's much improved. And now they just have to clean it up against in the games where it really matters that you play as mistake-free as possible. Um, I think defensively, you're seeing Christian Wilkins dominate inside. Uh, their, their middle is uh, – and they really get going. It, it's just that there's such a problem. And their front sevens is such a problem for, team, for teams when they're really helping. They're healthy and going. And now it's like Bradley Chubb's getting it together. And, and these last few games, you know, when he, you know, that's just, that's a lot of problems to deal with. And um, if you have a, you know, 80, 90% healthy Xavier Howard and Jalen Ramsey, because by the end of the season, nobody's 100% healthy. But if you have a 90% healthy Xavier Howard and Jalen Ramsey, you can do so many things defensively that you can, you know, teams can look at you on film and you can, you might be able to throw some, throw new stuff at them. That's not fun to see in January. Like nobody wants to see, we haven't, oh, we didn't see that on tape or, you know, or, you know, we saw this once and, you know, I, we didn't even think to, we couldn't prepare for it because we you can't prepare for every little thing. And, it opens up what you can do conceptually. Um, so, you know, yeah, I, I, look, I think they're a B-plus team. They can be an A team. They're, they're where they are now. And, you know, a little, pers you know, Dolphin fans frustrated. I get it, but have you, have you been asleep the last 30 years? Have you looked at what we, we've been dealing with a lot of the time by this point in the season, the last 30 years? You know, if after nine games, four and five, two and seven, one and eight, oh and nine one year, you, you know, you're you're out of the playoffs. You're, you know, you're you're barely on the fringe and you need to hope this per this team loses, that team loses, that team, you know, two teams, planes crash something to each other. You you need that's how the Dolphin fans have been. The Dolphins have been the last, you know, up until last year, last last you know, pretty much the last thirty years. They're six and three. They're leading their division. They're probably going to win their division unless something really strange happens to reverse the fortunes of uh, the Jets or Buffalo, and you know, or, or the Dolphins just collapse, which I don't see that happening. They're a really good team that's that's better than they are last year. Not good enough yet to be serious because it will contend there. Enjoy where they are for Pete's sake. You know? Why follow why follow sports if all you're gonna do is just be perpetually angry and frustrated about things? I mean, it's hey, you know, we got enough of that and just you know getting in our car to go to go pick up the kids school. You know, why are we gonna you know I, well, I think a lot of I think a lot of people are definitely. I mean, I think for sure it's been a, a fun first half of the season, and I think that uh, fans are definitely enjoying it. But I think that they also maybe was fueling some of the frustration, and maybe even me like fueling some of the frustration when I watch the teams. Like, because you see the potential, you see that they have so much talent. So it's like when you don't play to that potential, there is some frustration there. So you know, it's it's twofold. You know, you can enjoy it, you can be and as I said before, you can be happy and. Uh, about where you are, but not satisfied and knowing that there's more work to be done. And I think that with the Dolphins, there is another level and there is some potential uh, left untapped with this team. You know, I think that uh, they're not, they're not, they're not overachieving, you know, I think maybe no, they're, no, they're, you're saying they're underachieving a bit. Cause I feel, like, I feel like they're the most talented team in the AFC, you know? So, you know, and I think that, you know, there's still just one game out of the best record in the AFC. Um, but, you know, from the fan perspective, you know, you can enjoy and be grateful and happy about what the team is doing, but also understand that, you know, there's still some, some, some untapped potential right there. And I think that uh, that's kind of the, the feeling with a lot of fans right now. Yeah. I, I just, I, you know, I, I just, I just think you, at some point you gotta, you gotta sit back and sit back and enjoy and 
enjoy being on the plus side <laughs> of the wins and losses <laughs> and enjoy having an exciting offense, enjoy having an offense an offense that you know can get it done. Enjoy having a, a defense that's got a lot of impact players. Um, and, you know, just enjoy having, I think, the best offense team we've seen in a while. And one of the few that we can even talk about being a Super Bowl contender at this point in the season. Because, you know, 2000, you know, it was just, their playoff teams are what, 2008? Uh, we, we, I, I covered that. I covered that team. You, they, they didn't fare well against the better teams. They barely scraped by against you know bad teams, that, and and they got and they got you know slotted out of the playoffs quickly. But you know it's they weren't a Super Bowl contender, but you can still enjoy the season at least because it was a big surprise. Twenty sixteen, not a Super Bowl contender playoff team but not a Super Bowl contender at all. And that was shown in the playoffs. Again, they got swatted out by Pittsburgh, you know. And I don't think last year they were a Super Bowl contender. They were a really good team when two was healthy. But you really knew, eh, you know, even if he stays healthy, okay, maybe they get past the first round. But they're not, they're not, you know, they're not making it to late January. And this team has the potential to do that. So, you know, so be happy about that let's appreciate that and let's go forward let's go in the bye week yeah i think yeah we've all definitely enjoyed you know just from my perspective ah. you know, i've been enjoying watching this team fans have definitely been enjoying watching the team. it's been a fun first half of the season and we still got eight more games uh to go and possibly <laughs> potentially most likely a couple more so we'll see what the dolphins have in store for us but as you said uh we got the bye week um, couldn't have come at a better time and uh, the Dolphins will be back in action on Monday um, so uh, yeah we'll enjoy, enjoy the bye week and then we'll get back to work uh, for the Dolphins and here uh, the Dolphins of that podcast and I that will still us... be at work you you gonna be taking the time off no, I, I'm still, hey, be, I'm I'm still still be, be, I will still be cranking out stuff every day in the Miami Herald I will be cranking out stuff as well in the Miami Herald just <laughs> I'm not at practice and not covering games yeah, yeah, yeah. but but that brings us to the end of another edition <laughs> of the Dolphins of that podcast. I want to thank you guys as always for tuning in. A reminder uh, to subscribe to the Miami Herald YouTube page, like, share, comment, as well as subscribe to the Miami Herald. As I said before, we still, it might be a bye week, players might be away from the facility. We still got a bunch of stories uh, and content coming out. So definitely stay uh, live. I'm thinking, I'm thinking Rob Benders and Cutler Bay for hosting us. Or host to me, at least. Yeah, I was going to say, roast to you, at least. And I ain't getting nothing. You over there munching hey, up, but, drinking drinks. Hey. I'm over shit over here in my apartment. Hey, bring it uh, Relax. Hey, bring, your bring your punk ass down here. Come on, man. <laughs> hey, we'll see. Hey, I'll, I'll accept the invitation. Uh, but again, we'll be back next week. Uh, All right. Fresh off the bye week to talk about the Dolphins' uh, upcoming game against the Raiders. Uh, but until then, you guys take care, and we'll see you soon. All right. Later.